Uh, this is going to be a hard one. Hi there, welcome and welcome back to my channel. This is the Phoebe Way and the Phoebe Way is dedicated to life in Germany, making it in Germany, moving to Germany, finding your way around Germany and all the legal topics, everything that concerns you as an expat, as a foreigner, as an immigrant in Germany. This is the place for you to be. This video today is a bit different. I'm coming to share with you a heart-to-heart -heart talk and also as always some information because I've been getting some questions from one or two people about how everything went down and um, what we should know as um, Africans, as Ghanaians, um, basically as foreigners living in Germany, right? The reason why, and also tell you guys about the reason why I've been away, um, the last time I posted a sit-down video um, or a longer video was back in May, I believe. Yes, in May. It was um, legal updates in May. Um, yeah, so I've been away um, because I lost my mom. My beautiful mom passed away um, in May. Um, some of you may know her, so just actually the some people told me to talk about it on camera. I was like, oh, I'll, I'll be able to, I'll be able to. And I've been waiting for a day that I've been quite good. And I've had a really good week full of positive energy, but my mom is my mom. And some of you may know my mom from one sit down video I, heard, I had with her, where I interviewed her about her experience as a single mom in a strange land, you know, she had just gone through a very terrible divorce. You know, we've been through a lot in this Germany <laughs> together. We're a team. Um, divorce, separation, divorce, um, running a business together, and then later just being best of buddies, you know, best friends. And she was, and is still, my number one cheerleader when it comes to YouTube because she always encouraged me to um, um, she always encouraged me to put out a new video sometimes she'd call me hey madam no videos this Sunday and I'd be like oh, I'm busy with work and you know you need and all that so I'll put it up next Sunday and all right I'm back so I needed a few moments to gather my thoughts um so talking to other people about the whole um funeral planning and the burial excuse me um some things some people were asking questions especially the questions actually came more from Ghanaians they wanted to know how things went the costs um what help you get access to grief counseling um, that part, um, that question came also came up also a lot, and especially because my mom and I were so close, and people knew I was I was going to be devastated. I'm still am devastated, and yes, I did get help, and I still get help um, grief counseling. So I'm I'm just thinking of going through the process and. Um, what you should look out for and one of one or two advice that we can take out of this you know this whole situation so I remember last year a friend of mine lost her dad and he was buried here and then on the way to the to the burial um, my mom was like it's, it's something different that he's being buried here because normally Ghanaians would take their loved one back home and have the funeral there. That's what's normally done, except the person does not have a lot of family here and all of that. But most of the time, you're buried here, uh, you're buried back home. Especially the Nigerians as well, they also do that. Because we believe that our souls should be in our home country, in our hometown, and that's where you'd be buried and all that. So 
that was one thing and my I was telling my mom I think it's a good thing that he was buried here because here his children the most important people in his life and his wife are still here so if they want to feel close to him they will go to his grave um, lay flowers light a candle go there talk to him you know and my mom didn't say anything so when she fell ill um, and these these topics came up she was like if I happen to die here bury me here don't take me home and then one of her close colleagues at work reached out to me and said you know your mom said if she should ever pass away here um, she would she's buried here so that her children can lay flowers on her on her grave and visit her on her birthday mother's day you know this was what i had told her but i realized even though she was quiet at that time she she kind of thought about it and accepted it for herself so as she said she's not the typical african mom who she said in that sit down video i had with her um her children come first and so what i said she took to heart and that is just one beautiful thing about my mom that i I um I get to cherish every day that whatever it was she made sure that we were okay and it wouldn't be a bother to us. Another thing was she let me know I don't want any ntsnasi. Men ntsnasi be I just you know have the funeral the prayers and that's it don't do any ntsnasi. Don't call people. So that was the aim as well a private burial and the thing was a lot of people do not know this but we used to have an african shop so um we are quite known i would say among the Ghanaian community especially the community that was here in stuttgart up to 2015 you know so yeah people do know us but then after we stopped running the business um we became very private and people would know that know as well that we just moved away to a smaller village we just left the Stuttgart you know hectic life and just we're really we just drew drew back we just drew back and at the end of the day if you watch um my mother's 50th birthday videos if you watch um every time there was a celebration it was just family we we even on big days for graduation and everything we never did like a big party and calling outside outsiders um, it was always a very close-knit thing so for us the family her children um, it was never a question of whether it's going to be big or not uh, once she had already said it and two that's what we are, we've been used to for the past seven years it's Yagra, it's Yagra, yeah, yeah, anything big. So that's another thing, and I, I want to explain it now so that because a lot of people, I got a lot of feedback, people were like, eh, um, and her daughter said she wants a private burial and everything. My mom wants a private burial, and I'll give it to my mom. And I understand how my mom wants a private burial because we have the same lifestyle. So, and that is it. Let me explain this and get that out of the way. So, that. Now, when your loved one passes away in a hospital, the hospital will call you, especially the person who put their contact down as the contact person. And I happen to be the one. So they were trying to reach me on the cell phone, which for some reason wasn't going through. So they called the house. And there was a few minutes after my mom had passed away and had tried to um, get her back and they were not successful so they called back they called me again the second time and this time it went through and I was told and then when I was told they were like you can come and bid farewell you can come and pay your last respect you can come and say goodbye you can come and spend time with her I said okay and that was one aim and that 1 a.m. I wasn't capable of driving obviously 
um, I just I was just numb and shocked so I called and my partner was away but he came and took us to the hospital and the hospital is going to give your loved one the first um, clean bath they will disinfect the body and lay lay her in, in states but not for everyone but just you the family or the ones that you come with and it's really a nice room they put candles there you can ask for tea you can ask for what like whatever you want to drink they'll give better than they would give you food and i don't think you want to eat next to a loved one who has just left you know you don't i don't even drink anything none of us drink drunk anything we're not even there so by the time you go if you're able to reach there the same day because i was there just a few hours later her body was still warm she looked like she was asleep and at that time the only thing that made me know that she was no more alive was the fact that she wasn't responding to my wailing to my crying to me waking her up that was um the only thing so you can spend as much time as you want with your loved one and then you go to you you're then after when you're done you go back to the, the front desk or the information desk of that um section of the hospital and then they will let you know it is your duty to find a funeral home and so that day, the 26th of May, was a holiday in Germany, All Saints, All Saints Day. She's a saint, so. Um, so I wasn't able to call the funeral home. I, I'm not, it's not that I wasn't able to, or I, I thought it was a holiday, but I got to know that you can call them 24-7 and they will come, or they will tell you to come. So that Thursday... The shock was there, I was really weak, so I, I gave myself time. And then called Friday, I believe. So my brother called with my partner, they called and they had an appointment for the next day being Saturday. So we went there and the funeral home basically would take care of every, every, everything you want them to take care of. They can plan if you want to have a gathering after the internments, they would they would do everything for you. All you need to do is tell them what you want them to do. And of course, pay them as well. But if you are not strong enough to do all of these, they will do it for you. So, on the phone, they told us, come with her ID, come with her passport, come with her health insurance card, come with this, come with that. I said, okay. And then we went. And then they said we are going to go pick her up and bring her to the um to the Aussegnungshalle. So the Aussegnungshalle is basically like the chapel at the um at the cemetery. And that chapel has other rooms where they keep the bodies and it's like a cold room. One big difference there is that when I asked how long we can keep her for they said a week max because she's just cold like the body is just cold room it's not um frozen she's not going to be frozen so they're just keeping her you know chilled um but it's not frozen so it's like more like a like a fridge and not like a deep freezer like unlike in ghana and so we're just giving eight days and they was and they said Thursday or Friday and because my uncle was coming from the States I said Friday and um, we all said Friday so and that was it so then they would tell you to choose the coffin you choose the the pillow you know everything that she would need to be comfortable and you choose the color if you want white you know everything and then also that's one part then how to plan the the, the service is something they can help you plan or if you want to plan it yourself with your own um, pastor or preacher you can do that as well fortunately enough my mom had already said who to leave the service our preacher but he wasn't able to make it 
from our church so but he wasn't able to make it so my uncle had to step in that's another thing so um you 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 can do what you can do and they can do everything for you and they can also go to the authorities and register the death of already the hospital is going to inform them and then no they will go to authorities i believe and register the death and everything and then the certificates and everything and you have the ids and everything um invalidated all that they will go take care of everything for you just that you have to pay them what they pay so that was it and so a week later on a friday my mom was laid to rest and we did as she instructed us to um i don't think i'll put snippets of the funeral here in this video but um basically um, you are free to choose between um, a burial, um, cremation, and there are different. I think three different, and then yeah, three different types of um, laying to rest that you can do. And then even when it comes to burial in the cemetery, they have different types of. Um, do I say plot or spaces? How do they call it? The ground, like there, are, there are ones that like double decker, like for families or for couple. There's one that the person would just have their peace. They would lay by themselves with no neighbors. You can also have neighbors, and there are different forms of burial um, types. Okay, and the funeral home is going to explain everything to you. When it comes to grief, grief is individual. Grief is hard. It's very hard. Um, it is not for everyone. <laughs> who, who is ready to grieve? You know, like <laughs> um, there are people who are strong, and there are some of us who have never had to be really, really sad and stayed sad without any of their doing for a while. Personally. I am not used to being sad. Even when I'm sad, I play songs. When I feel um, uneasy, when I'm anxious about, for example, um, the results from an exam or, every, or anything, I just play songs, I dance, beat gospel. You know, that's why I love Ghanaian music so much because most of the tunes are danceable. So I'll just dance my worry away, basically. But this is a time where I don't even have the energy to, to dance. I don't have the energy to pick the phone and put in that music, you know. It's 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 not easy. And grief comes with different sets of emotions, guilt, anger, denial. Sometimes it comes with joy. You will not believe it. It comes with joy. Sometimes some things are so hilarious that only you find hilarious. Grief comes with you feeling like you're crazy. Because you'll be hearing your loved one's voice and you'll be like Hey, I don't know why to laugh at all. That's what I do. I literally, I mean, so sad. But nah, it's part of the grief. And yes, that's the person talking. And um, you also hear a lot of insensitive things. That's part of grief. Or part of the people who are going to make your grief harder. So, when it comes to that, especially if you're like me who's never had to grieve before in this dimension. I've lost my grandmother before, as in my mom's mom. And because I, have, I was away when she passed on, I had seen her the January before she passed on in May, I, uh, um, and also she was, she was blessed with age. She was over 80, you know, so I felt like it's called to glory. But my mom, she was supposed to turn 52 last week. So it's it's not normal for her to leave us this. Especially think of how much effort she has put into us. And now that we, we, are, we've, we are there to, you know, now that it's time for her to enjoy the fruits of her labor, she's no more here. But as they say, God knows best. And we don't know what would have happened if she had been here. So... She deserves the rest, the peace, as we saw her on her last day, and that gives us comfort.
Uh, what I wanted to say is get help with grief. I got help. I'm still getting help in the form of um, grief counseling. Here in Germany, there is the Hospiz. The Hospiz, they have a program called Trauerbegleitung. There's Einzelberatung and then there's Gruppenberatung. So Einzelberatung is like you have an individual conversation with your therapist or you have you in a group setting. I've not done the group setting yet, but I'll start that as well with other people who are bereaved. And the the Einzelberatung is or Einzelgespräch is good in the form that all your questions are answered. And you know, grief also has to do a lot of cult with culture, and you have to know. Basically, you are taught to do what makes you feel good, and what you know that your loved one would approve and especially when it's your mom you know your mom would want you to be fine no matter what you know so um the grief therapy helps with these questions as well the grief therapy helps with these questions as well and i would definitely encourage you no matter where you are no matter how far um it happened that you lost your loved one and if you are in Germany reach out to the Traubegleitung in your city and yes it's mostly free if you want to do in Stuttgart if you want to do the group um, course or the group therapy that one costs I think 100 euros for the whole thing and it goes about it stretches about three months and I think the individual one is free but if you want you can make a donation so this is um, what I came to talk to you guys about. When it comes to the cost of burying um, your loved ones, it's anything between 5k, 10k, and even more. depends on how um, you want it, basically. But even the cheapest would probably be around 5 Give you pain out of your pocket. And some of the questions I got that it's free. For some people, it is free, especially if the person had no one. Um, here in Germany, um, the state pays for the funeral, and so yes. But my mom didn't have no one. She got us. Hello. <laughs> and so um, it wasn't free. And once you have family that are documented as your family, they will be called. You get it. So um, it's not free for everyone. And even if your family cannot afford it, there is a way that the state can help. Um, because I didn't have to go that route, I won't be able to tell you all of that, but I'll leave some of the links below if you're in this situation or you have someone um, in the palliative ward or you're yeah, just, you know, confronted with a similar situation for you to prepare yourself. One thing I've learned from this is that be prepared. Be prepared prepared and have these uncomfortable discussions with your family members so they know what you would want and I tell you what that would give them a certain strength to block out um, some things that are going to pull them down that would make things easier for them so I'm glad that my mom had these these conversations with us i'm glad that she told us who to call and what to do and who to reach out to and even then she told us it's 80 percent but 20 percent she didn't tell us because she probably wasn't aware of these things and i, I think she because she wasn't aware because if she was she would have told us so guys yes i have to end now now i hope um this video brings clarity to you Thank you so much for your support. Listen, I was away and the subscribers were growing. You guys were coming back watching. And I remember I posted a short video and somebody was like, hey, you're posting again. And so many people were telling me on WhatsApp, I'm so glad you're back and all that. I'm not back 100%, but I'll do my best to put out these videos. And yes, this week I've already um, done a video, so that would also be going out. So yes, I am kind of back. <laughs> And thank you so much for the love. Um, when I posted my mom's birthday on Instagram, a lot of people reached out to me. 
thank you so so much and um yeah take good care of yourselves be safe out there um and when you pray pray for me pray for my family and for our entire family because it's a big blow definitely so pray for us and um i'll see you in the next one tschüssi mm -hmm.